Okay guys, welcome to episode 3 of our barn building series, How to Build a post Naveen Barn. In this episode, we're going to be going over uh, kind of a construction procedure, uh, an overall recommended procedure, so what you should do first, what should you should do second, and so on. Um, as you can see, I've got kind of... Uh, what I call, would call a first phase going here. This would be uh, day number one after you get the concrete poured. This uh, assumes that you've got your concrete foundation already in place. Uh, uh, doing concrete foundations and that type of thing is beyond the scope of this video. This video will cover from the foundation up. So what you can see here is I've got a bunch of posts, all the posts of the barn, on a concrete slab. So this is what I this is the way I recommend you construct. Start start with these short posts, these lean to posts on the end if you have if your barn design have has those. Um, otherwise you can start with just the main posts. Now the U bracket that attaches the post to the concrete and I'll show a picture right here of that. Okay, you can see the U-bracket attached to the concrete. These U-brackets are um, are very strong, and they'll hold that post in the, its proper location without any bracing. Um, of course, so you can put in all of your uh, posts once you get your U-brackets in the correct spot. Okay, in this picture you can see we have uh, installed the, our first row of posts and we're beginning to install the second row. Um, you can do this with minimal machinery. You can do it with a front end loader on a tractor or uh, you know really these smaller posts here can be installed just by hand. Um, the larger posts on the other hand, the, the longer bigger posts that we're going to be installing here, uh, we used a man lift that we rented for the entire month. Uh, after you get all the posts up, then you can proceed to put girts and uh, um, other bracing on the structure, like the tie beams and that type of thing. So, okay, so now you can see we've got the girts started to install. Uh, and then the next step is to add the tie beams and any connecting beams between the, the main posts and the lean-to posts and knee braces. Um, you can see we've added all the tie beams with the posts underneath the, the tie beam on the ends. You can see on the inside there's no post. This is basically the center post is just to hold the end girts in place. You know, and then of course you're going to finish adding the rest of these beams. And uh, now the next step would be to install the purlins um, on these lean-to roof areas. This is going to help us um, work on the upper, upper section of the barn. We can uh, put our roof sheathing on here, which is 1 by 8 um, uh, white pine board. Or, you know, if you're using another material, that's fine as well. These are 24 inches on center, so any any really roof sheathing will work here. Um, but we use this kind of as a platform to work on uh, the uh, siding, on the board and batten siding on the uh, knee wall and uh, to help uh, set the rafters in place. At this point, you can see that we have installed the floor joists this will give us a working platform to use while we're doing our other work. Um, we're tr always trying to think ahead about the next step in the process and how we can make that easier um, and less complicated, less costly. Um, is if we build this lower structure first and have this everything squared and in, in good shape, then when we proceed to the uh, the higher parts, um, we will have uh, a, a good solid platform to work on. Now, I will mention that in this particular project, uh, we didn't do it exactly this way because 
um, we plan to set these trusses all at once in one day now uh, with a machine now the uh, uh, so we did not put these tie beams in nor did we put these floor joists in uh, we actually set the rafters first uh, we build all, all these lean-to structures and then we set the rafters in place that way um, that gave us the opportunity to come in and, and with uh, a machine and drive right through here the center so that's another way to do it if you uh, let, let's kind of see what that looks like here one caveat I would I would mention with that is you want to make sure that these posts are very well secured to the rest of this frame structure uh, because they're going to tend to want to move around when you set these rafters in place these timber rafters so what you want to do is kind of brace these posts up a little bit um, anywhere you can um, you might want to you know tie them together with with some straps as you're setting the post in place um, the reason we leave these tie beams out is so that we can drive in to the center of the barn with our uh, with our telescoping forklift and set these rafters in place okay so here you can see that the tie beams are installed and so are the floor joists um, like I said you can do this first but just keep in mind that you're gonna have to rent a crane that can reach all the way back so that you can set your trusses if you don't want to rent a crane and you want to use it with telehandler or something like that um, leave these tie beams out and uh, um, set the rafters first but make sure you brace these posts so that they don't move when you're setting your rafters because if they do you're gonna have a hard time lining them back up again once you get uh, everything put together okay at this point it's time to assemble your rafters on the ground and then set them in place as a whole unit uh, your rafter assembly consists of you know the, the tie beams or the uh, excuse me the rafter beams the collar ties the kink posts and these kink post braces you can see this uh, a little bit closer here this unit right here is the rafter um, set these in place and then use GRK screws to secure them to this post or four hole strap metal strap plates depending on your application if you're in hurricane area I would recommend using the strap plates um, high wind over 90 mile per hour um, wind load you'll want to use the metal strap plates as well uh, um, when you set your rafters you're going to want to have these one by ten or these two by tens ready to go cut to 10 foot long they'll um, have these ready to go and have yourself some angle braces ready uh, what you want is some rigidity this in this direction you don't want this to to rack back and forth while you're putting on your your roof purlins and then you can go ahead and add your purlins uh, roof sheathing and board and batten siding okay the next step in the uh, construction procedure is to install these uh, roof purlins on the main structure after you get these installed then you'll install your roof sheathing on top of this uh, um, uh, the roof structure here now during this whole process um, I would encourage you to add your board and batten siding as you can um, to a point now if, if a lot of times you need your roof deck in place if you're going to install your board and batten siding all the way up to the bottom surface of the uh, roof deck uh, so you'll have to make a decision as to which uh, way you want, which method of board and batten installation you want to use um, but uh, I recommend running the board and batten all the way up to the bottom of the roof deck that way uh, there won't be any any uh, um, birds flying up into your structure uh, through the the eave um, 
whether you put a soffit on or not. That actually makes it so that you can leave these rafter tails kind of open. Uh, you can put a fascia on there if you want to, or you can just leave it open so you can see the structure. Some people like to do that. Uh, basically, you would put your, you know, your roof board would come down to here, and then your siding board would come up to the roof deck. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw that in so that you can see a little bit better what that would look like. All right, in uh, this drawing, you can see. Uh, we've put the siding on, one, uh, the 1x10, one not the battens yet, but the 1x10. You can see how these, uh, and we, we've got the uh, roof decking material on as well. Now, you, I say 1x10, but you can use 1x12, you can use 1x14, 16, 1x8, 1x6, whatever you, whatever you have. Um, um, it's not a hard and fast rule. You know, you can use 1x10. You know, one by inter interchangeably, pretty much anywhere on the building. So if you've got various widths of of one by, and you want to um, you want to uh, conserve your uh, wood, you you can use it. So at any rate, I'm going to show you here how uh, how we link these two together. So we've got the uh, one by roof sheathing on top of our um, our purlins. Um, nailed in this direction and then we have our 1x10 uh, board on our um, nailed onto our girts in this direction and you can see the two meet up right here underneath the eave. If you do it this way you can leave this area open if you prefer if you wish you don't have to box this eave in now I will will tell you one thing uh, if you do this right up in here there's a little spot right here on top of this beam between this uh, um, this skirt or this purlin and the next one up where there will be a gap that you'll have to fill or birds will want to get up there and nest. Um, so you'll have to put a one by across here um, in this direction, you know, something to block this um, area here. A lot of times, what a guy, will, what what somebody will do is take a scrap piece of three by six and just put that in here on top of the beam, and that'll fill the gap just fine. Um, and that'll keep any birds out of that uh, uh, area. So the time to do that would be the would be while you are installing your um, your purlins. Uh, you just take a scrap piece of three by six and about you know 12 inches to 16 inches long. You know, really you could go from one to the other if you wanted to, um, and then and and just screw it right down to the top of this beam. Um, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You're going to have one foot cutoffs from your uh, the, your end girts here or your end purlins anyway, because um, this is 11 feet, and you're going to have 12 foot long um, purlins on your end. So all of these will be cutoffs, and you can use these to install right in here. Um, to keep birds from getting up in, into that area. Um, if you want to, you can put a one by fascia out there here, or one or a two by fascia out here, and then uh, and then you can uh, cover this area with uh, soffit material. You know, uh, short pieces of one by going going back and forth here, but you really don't have to, um, especially if you're doing a uh, metal roofing. Uh, the roofing will be vented uh, with the ribs of the metal. So that's what I recommend for installation of the board and batten siding and the roof sheathing. Okay, at this point, uh, you can add, start adding your cupolas and your timber porch and any other um, finishing touches. Uh, you're going to put, you're going to be putting on your board and batten siding and your roof sheathing and then your roofing material 
um, windows and doors, whatever else you need to uh, uh, add to the barn for its finishing touches. Um, and uh, once you get all said and done with that, you'll have a finished barn. It's really not that complicated. Um, this is basically an overall procedure. We're going to get into detail in the next few videos on how all these these different uh, things are installed. This is just a broad overview. So, um, so if you have any questions, uh, make sure you leave them in a comment below. Send them to us in a in an email, or uh, give our 800 number a call 888-835-1466. And we'll try to answer your question in videos or uh, or just through email, that type of thing. So, But anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, uh, stay tuned for the next one. We'll be going over how to install or how, how these posts are actually installed into the U-bracket. So uh, thanks for watching again, uh, and uh, we will catch you on the next video. Have a great day. Bye.